everybody. I tried so hard to hit 6.30. It's rare that I make it. But I have a good excuse today. Um, I was out of town with Steve. So, um, we had three boxes. Oh, I haven't lifted them up yet. Kurt did. Heavy. That might mean one thing. And then I have updates on some things. And then, and then questions. So, um, bear with me through all this. And I got a couple emails today from people afar watching. One is from UK. It's a new person from UK. Uh, I've been so crazy I didn't I didn't write down the name, but wanted to welcome everybody. And uh, we'll we'll get started on the boxes. And I need one of you kitties to take notes for me. KW, you could do that. We've got uh, Amazon, Amazon, and Amazon, and of course it's all Amazon because our postal system is closed today because of Columbus says, because of Columbus Day. So, but UPS carries on. So this one, you know, I'm I'm also uh, okay. This one here, sorry folks, this is what I was just gonna say. I just saw the name. It's from Jack Cat, and she's got another box coming, and she wants them open together. So I check those boxes. If another one's from Jack Cat, then we'll open them. If not, we'll wait. I think this one would be tomorrow. The second one would come. So I didn't look at anything. I just saw the white thing and looked at that. This is one of my favorites. This is Zelda. I love her. Yep. we get to do. This is from um, Karen S. from Amisville, Virginia. I think that's how you pronounce it. Karen S. from Amisville, Virginia. So what I'm doing, we've got our map up and I started working on it today, putting the push pins in. And I'll put one in on Virginia. And also the blue tipped pins, stick pins, are going to be the um, route where the patty box is going. So I've already got one in Ohio and I put one there in London where Severn is and then wherever she sends it we'll put another and we'll kind of make a little track on that. So this one is from Karen. Yeehaw! We got food. This is Whiskas. You know when we do there's there's 24 in here so this is the same as um, 12 cans of frisky size. So when we do breakfast in the morning, all I have to do if I decide to do packets is to grab one box or one can of um, friskies and add it to this. So that would make one whole meal for the kitty. Yeah, thank you, Karen. And this, oh, this is the large one. This is the 32. I'm going to leave the plastic on because we won't, I think this will be in a couple days we'll be getting to this one. This is Seafood 32, and it's all pate, so we appreciate that. And today's Monday, so tomorrow my sister Judy is here. She'll do the cupboards again. And uh, some, somebody was here this weekend, and they said, oh, it looks like you got a, got a good supply of cat food. And I said, yeah, it looks like a good supply of cat food, but when you go through, what did we figure out, three cases a day? You know, it goes darn fast. And when she gets done with it, and she... Puts, puts everything in the cupboard so that we've got it ready for the week. Um, it dwindles down. But And that was something I wanted to tell you about our meals right now with your webcammer. So we'll get to that too. This one is from Amazon also. This one's from the Indiana one. It's okay, Badu. Come on. You know, Badu, I think, is doing better and better all the time. Oops. Oh, yep, 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 yep. We got, a, we got one, we got one. And this is, oh my goodness. Um, it's from A. Caragos. A. Caragos. I'm not sure um, what maybe the webcam name is. But whoever A. Caragos. And I'm probably really messing up the name. Um, if you can... Let me know what state you're in. 
we'll put a pin on our map for you. So thank you. A. I'm just going to say A. And it's a case of the Fancy Feast, the Classic, and the Seafood. Oh, that other one I think was Seafood too. Sometimes we have like all fish days. I like to mess around when I do their breakfast. Have a lot of fun. <laughs> um, twice a year we put Panicure. Um, uh, panicure wormer in uh, the food. Every single kitty that comes in here gets um, pyrantal. It's a good round wormer and hook worms. But twice a year, our vets say just panicure everybody. And it's a very broad spectrum um, panicure. And I just put it in the breakfast food. We figure out the average weight in here, or the combined weight in here. And then instead of doing it three days, we do it four days. And it has a little bit of a at least I've never tasted it, but it looks like it has a little bit of a chalky look to it. So today I I splurged a little bit and added a can of um, a sardines. Hope that was okay to it, and they gobbled it all up. So I might have to borrow four of those those cans of sardines that were sent. And speaking of those sardines, those are the best sardines I've ever tasted. They are delicious. So thank you, A, and thank you, Karen S. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, on the way home from our doctor appointment today, I wrote down some things. Um, well, the big news is is that Severn received the Patty travel box, and that that got that arrived. I heard first from um, Gemini that Severn got it, and then I just heard from Severn. So hopefully it arrived in one piece. I taped it up really good, so maybe we can use that box. I know eventually down the line going that many places that it may have to be replaced. But um, it's in Severin's hands now, so we'll see one. She'll eventually get a picture on Facebook of what she takes it with. That's going to be so exciting to see that first real one. And then we don't know who she's going to send it to. A lot of you guys sent me addresses that you would like to participate in the Patty Travel Box, and I put those inside. Other people have sent Severin their addresses, so there's more than 20, and we're doing 20 visits, and then it'll come back here, and then we'll kind of regroup and do it again. So don't be upset if you don't get in on the first time. Um, we're just starting, and this is going to be a fun thing. So uh, we'll eventually hopefully get to whoever wants to be involved in it and have fun. Remember, if anybody gets it, and uh, because of the distances, Angie, um, he's totally turning this down and is going to bury it. So I don't know if maybe Twinkle would like it. <laughs> Butter, that wasn't very nice. Um, because of the distance of the postage, or the, um, well, the cost of the postage, if anybody needs help, please don't hesitate to ask because we can help you out on that. So that's that one. Um, This morning, uh, Linda Clem, as you know her, and Mary E. was here this morning. They helped me do a whole lot of treatments. We did probably 25 treatments, and that covers like special ear cleanings to vaccines to wormings. We had a couple leukemia tests, second go around, um, and flea prevention applied. And they helped me find all those cats. That saves so much time when I can kind of stay over there and keep the medicines going and keep the book work done and they just bring me the cats. And we try to do that when the audio is on so you guys can listen in on what we do. And then she also weighed uh, a whole bunch of them too. We, we got a whole lot of them weighed. Butter, you're just staring a hole right in me, aren't you? Pet finders. We've, I've got all of the ones that are now neutered or spayed in pet finders. And Amy and Kurt are working on the pictures to get those in, so that way you can see um, a, a close-ups of all those um, kitties. Um, so hopefully in the next day or two that that will be done. Our our new friend from the UK, uh, he's the one who he or she I'm not really sure had made a really good suggestion that I think we'll do. He had said because of the time difference, sometimes like right now it's something like midnight or quarter till one a.m. For them to watch boxes and he said it would be helpful if they knew if there were boxes to wait up for so I think what we're going to do if it works out is I'll make a card stock of a big B 
and we'll post it here. And so if you all during the day see a big B here, uh, just a big letter B, you'll know that we have boxes. But remember, we get them from four sources. One, sometimes people just walk in with them and say, we want these opened at box time to the regular postal system, and then UPS, and then FedEx. So it comes at a variety of times. And right now, since we are, well, I hate to say it, but starting to get into more of the holiday seasons, some of those deliveries come later and later. But as soon as we know we got a box, we'll put it up there for everybody to see. I'll get that ready to start tomorrow. Uh, we are still number one in the animal rescue site. Did you see that, Angie? Yes, I did. Yeehaw. Means we won the week. That's, that's right. Angie just said means we won the week. So we, we won $1,000 by staying in top um, voting place for the first week. Um, number one has to do that for, you know, for... Um, that first place one so we're guaranteed of that 1,000 but oh my goodness I would love 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 to get that 5,000 and we can do that by staying in first place but we are voting I think it's um, seven or eight weeks December 18th seemed like it was earlier last week 18th December 18th yep there. that's Kurt saying yeah so we got a long way to keep it up so but we can do it I'm so excited. Uh, tomorrow in the mail, we should get the estimate for. I talked, or he's been emailing me, and he told me he popped it in the mail. We should get the estimate for the office and the new office, the bathroom, and Thumper's room. So, oh, with trepidation, I'll open that envelope and see what this first part is. But that's what I'm. My goal is to be able to help use that money um, to be able to pay for this floor. <laughs> This spot that's right there, I think you guys can probably see it and a lot of times. It's growing daily, and the bubble that's under it is growing daily. And I again saw another cat taking the toenail and just going flick, flick, flick. And then they think it's cool because those little flakes make a little noise on the floor. So we got to do something. <laughs> um, the good news uh, on the floor, though, those four testing spots I told you about where we covered it up with plastic and then taped it all off, um, the, the moisture is not coming from bottom side up. So that means that they can put in a floor here that will stand up for years and years and years and years. So that was what I was hoping for. I just took him down, took those four places apart today. It's been on there a week. He said, wait four or five days. And I went a whole week. So I'm, I'm very confident that, that we can do this. And... Oh, this was kind of cool, I thought. I wanted to pass this on to all the webcammers. Today's breakfast, 100% of it, was donated by the webcam viewers. Even um, the KMR. And I've been using some of the... Oh, we must have finished using it. There was a, someone had sent like four cans of uh, milk for senior for geriatrics or our oldsters. And I've been adding it to like Putter's food and magenta and added jeans. And they like it. So that is also included in that. The laundry soap that we've been using today and in the last week has all been donated by the webcam viewers. And 90% of this afternoon's meal and this evening's meal was donated by you webcam viewers. And what that means is it's huge for me. That is huge because food and meds and surgeries and all those things are my highest well and utilities, all of it. It is a high cost to us. Um, but when you guys can help us like this with the foods and all those other things you do, that leaves me where I'm not sweating it so bad when I pay bills. And between the, the surgeries and the meds, our, our leukemia and FIV test, um, the insurance, all of this, it, it goes a lo much longer way. It helps me so much. And I don't think I have quite so much gray hair as worry as when you guys have been helping me. So I'm grateful, very grateful for that. I think that's all the things I had down. We had some questions. Um, Meg's PA from Meg's from Pennsylvania, I'm assuming, asked about Farah. Still no seizures. So we're, I'm, I'm losing track now. Sixth or seventh week, she's right up here. I still have to give her meds tonight, but she's doing awesome taking them. 
Um, and like I said the other day, if I kind of not pay attention to the time, and it's like she knows it, she'll go over there and she just watches me, and it's like, what does she want? Oh, yeah, her meds. So she's doing really good, really, really good. Um, that's Thera. Frank asked about my mom, dad, and Kellen. Mom's doing great. My dad's had a little rougher day today, so I'll be out there again tomorrow to help them with groceries and feeding their birds and things. It's just a day-to-day -day process right now. Um, Kellen, good news on Kellen. Thursday, she gets a swab done to check for her MRSA that she has, and then the results will be in on Monday, and if it's negative, she gets her pick line that she wears um, pulled on Tuesday. So. We're, we're really hoping that that happens for her. That's been a, it's very time consuming, all the medicines, so we hope so. Uh, Franklin Katz asked about Tukey. And you all know, she's on hold. There's Tukey girl. She was waiting so nicely in the box for me. We weighed her today too, and she's got some really wonderful weight gain. Hi, Tukey, say hi. Yeah, I think your family's out there. Your new family. So Tukey is not saved yet. I just talked to my vet late this afternoon, one of our vets, Dr. Pettigrew and Brian, and we're going to take her in tomorrow. And if they have time on their surgery schedule, they're going to get her spayed um, earlier than our November 5th day that we have scheduled for most of the other cats here. So we want to get her done since she's spoken for. Um, Clem and Siamese Mish asked how Steve is doing. He's got to have some more tests this week, more and more and more. Um, Wednesday and Thursday, if everything is okay on those things, his surgery is a week from tomorrow. And this, this gets me. His surgery is not until 11.30, but we have to be there at 6 o'clock in the morning. It's like they're just going to have us come in and sit four and a half hours. I can't stand that. So um, he'll be off work four to six months, and um, we just got a lot to do to prepare for this this next week. So. Um, so we're hoping, hoping that that's gonna, everything's gonna go through so that he can get that knee done on uh, next Tuesday. Carolina Ash, and, oh, you know what? Carolina Ash asked about Bella and the meds. I'm gonna hold on Bella for just a minute. Um, oh my word! I have to write better because I don't know what that says. Migs from PA asked about Racer, how old he is, and and I asked him, can I tell him? Because he's got a birthday coming up in January. Um, but he's, this is what he said. He's 39 going on 14. And I believe it sometimes. <laughs> so we'll let you know when his birthday is. But it's in January. Um, Nuki asked about another a resident story. And I'll get to that too when we're done here with the questions. Jim and I asked about Badu. If she eats with everybody. And... Down there at that end plate is where Brahmanique is eating. And, and I, when, one time when I just turned around a minute ago, Badu was sitting down there eating. She does fine. She eats with everybody. And so I think she's doing better and better all the time. She also asked about Raza, why we feed Raza in the pen for breakfast. Well, if you all remember when Raza's kitties were out and about and they were just fresh out here, Raza was pretty protective. And she was a little cranky and in, in no other terms of that she was a crank butt out here and so it was so much easier just to put her in pin six down here give her her breakfast and then that way she didn't cause such a turmoil because breakfast is stressful they're they've gone all night poor things without their their canned food and so it's a little bit of a stressful time sometimes because it's so crowded here with cats and then when Raza was like that it was she was really cranky so now she doesn't need to go in there but she's so routine she knows that routine she sits right there on the orange box there where putter is right now and she just sits there and I can even put the food down and she won't go down she will wait until I tell her go to her place and I open the door and in she goes into pin six eats her breakfast I open the pin door and out she comes again she's awesome she's a great cat uh, Oh, Severin asked if I ate. Yes, I did, Severin. I ate Taco Bell on the way home. Thank you for always asking me. Bubba asked how the little kitties are doing. Everybody's doing awesome here. Our, we're, we're just at a really good, healthy, healthy state right now. Um, 
just always grateful, so thankful at that. That means a lot to me to have everybody healthy. <laughs> Clem asked how Steve and I met. Um, he, one of his brothers asked me if I would go out with Steve when I was a junior in high school, and he was in college, and we went to a movie the, on our first date, and I just, we were just talking about this on the way home from Lima. I remember very, very well our first date because it was on April 12th, which uh, our second daughter, Karen, was born on April 12th, by the way. And But I remember on our first date, I thought to myself, uh, this is the guy I'm going to marry. I knew it then, and it still goes. He's a wonderful husband. Do you know that he's allergic to cats? But I've got, well, I've got my tin in the house, and Kurt has his um, dumpster in the house, and two two extra ones, uh, the crypto boys are in there a lot, and he does fine. He has to take meds every day, but he does it. He loves me. Um, Tuki, and Gr Tuki and Gramanique are both on hold. Yeah, that's you. And Gramanique is going to go Wednesday, going to go to PJ, so that's going to be great. And I think, oh, for the for the um, I think it seems like I missed something here. Let me just look real quick. I, I had one question down here. I can't read my writing. Bad shame on me. Um, for the resident story, I if I had more time, but you know, like I said, I I'm really running late because of our appointment. And Farah, Kurt, and I was talking about this today. Uh, Farah is not a resident cat. Remember, Farah and uh, Kira really are not resident cats, but right now, if, if somebody came in and wanted to adopt Kira, if they came in a lot and visited her and helped her feel real confident, confident about going into a new home, I think she could work it out. But Fira, until we get her situated, I guess you could say, with her seizures, um, I am not going to let her go until we do get her all situated. So she's here for a while. And then Kurt says, well, why does she have a collar on? But the collar is only on just to help anybody that comes in. And if she would be in a seizure, they could say, if anybody says white collar or white cat with a collar on having a seizure, boy, you know, we would immediately know who that is. Um, but Farah um, originally came to us just two years ago. Uh, she came on um, June 27th of 09. She was only seven weeks old. If I remember right, there was four kitties in that litter. All four were white, and uh, we did not have their mama, uh, but they were all wonderful kitties. A friend of ours had found them in the woods. Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. Farah came in alone, but it just so happened when Farah was here, we had um, four other white kitties. Um, the lady who found her found Farah in the woods, and she's actually the one who gave Farah her name, and I think it means something to do with the woods. She was seven weeks old, and what happened is Farrah actually, we don't believe, came in with um, a seizure problem, but she came in with severe ear mites, and so did the other four kitties also. And so I was not getting anywhere by using Acrax or Revolution. So we sometimes will do the sub-Q treatment of um, Avomat, and it usually does the trick on, on ear mites. But... I had opened up a new bottle of the Ivomac and I gave the correct dose to all five of these kitties and within, it was just hours, all five of them were in heavy seizures. And I, I will never forget because I had them here in Patience's pen, we had them all five lined up like sardines. They were all shaking, nose to tail, it was just traumatic. I think I bawled that day all day, it's like, what happened to my babies and, you know, are they going to be okay? They were out of it. and. Uh, very unresponsive. We just lined up the IV pool here and just kept giving them fluids uh, to help them and giving them medications to help calm their seizures. Well, they it took 24 hours and the all, they all seemed to uh, come out of it okay. Farah was the last one. Her seizures were the worst and um, the other four were adopted out, never had another seizure, but Farah has. And so we really truly think that hers were, uh, is a medicine-induced uh, seizure problem. Uh, 
And that's why when we were able to keep her seizure free for so long that we actually, by using meds, we took her off of those meds slowly, gradually, because it had been so long since she had had a seizure, we thought since it was medicine induced, probably would be okay now, and our vets agreed with that. Um, but unfortunately, as you all know, they came back again. Uh, and last year when they were very uh, in a rhythm, she just would not take the pills, and it got to be where it was just horrible. And she would run from me, and it was just awful. So those pocket po pocket pill uh, or pill pocket things this time, she loves them. I love it because she loves it and uh, makes it so much easier. But what happened, I think, on that medicine, I, I took the bottle back to the store, and the cap that was on that was not the... Um, cap that is usually on there and so they did a little research and a, but of course you know they they weren't sure if it was the medicine or not I fully do think it was the medicine because I know for sure the cap that was on there was not like any other cap that was on any of the previous ones or any of the ones I've ever used since then of that same medicine so that's kind of the story on Farah and we love her too she's wonderful um <clears throat> If I have time tomorrow and remember, I'll look up Farah's baby picture to show you. I wanted to give you an update on Bella. Um, gosh, that, that darn thing is just so aggravating to me, and it just is depressing to me because I want that to heal. I just talked to one of our other vets this afternoon, Dr. Pettigrew again, and Brian. He's, he's the one that's going to do two-piece surgery tomorrow. He's got Dr. Darcy Adams and Dr. Amanda, or Amanda Todd that works for him. These are the three best. I just love them. Them and Dr. Cindy. I love them. They're wonderful. They're so into cats, and they're, the equipment that they have there is phenomenal. But I talked to him quite a long time about Bella, and he agrees that we have to be very, very careful because that stump is life meaning to her. If, if we can't get that cleared up, it, it, it could be a major problem. We're, and he also agrees that we have to be very careful with what we do because we we can't do something that might make it worse. Um, but it is not closing. And what I noticed today is the edges. And yes, I have been using that vetromycin too. And I appreciate you guys so helping us. But what I noticed today on her, on the whole edges, is that uh, it's not soft and pliable anymore, which means that those two edges are probably not going to adhere together. It has to heal from the outside up, and then those edges have to close. When those edges are rough like that or kind of thickened, they're not going to hold together. So he's the one who actually did Bella's um, amputation. He remembers her. He remembers that she has that neurological problem in the other leg, and that's why he built up that muscle pad bigger than what they normally are. So we're going to take her in tomorrow morning to Dr. Pettigrew. He's going to be very careful with what he does because we don't want to do any harm. But what he's thinking of is because he left a good deal of muscle there, maybe he can reconstruct that a little bit, put in a drain tube, and sew it shut with leaving that drain tube there and seeing oh. how it is. Ideally, it would be great if she didn't put any pressure on that for a while, but facts are facts. She cannot, she has to use that, that um, stump to move. I mean, there's no, there's no other way. Because of her other problems, that's the only way she can get around. It's not like we can put her in the wheelchair, which you guys have offered, and I'm so grateful for your, your suggestions. But it, that, that just won't work for Bella. Um, I've had more than one people ask me about lightly sedating her. Um, we can't keep her out all the time, obviously, but the pain meds that I give her uh, do make her sleepy, and that's why she will sleep in Cat's corner room for hours a day, and that's all in helping her stay quiet. But the other problem is, is because now she won't leave those staples in very much. She likes to pull them out when that opens up, and it's as big as my baby my baby fingernail. Um, you know, we keep, the, keep this place clean, but it's inevitable the litter gets scattered around. She'll get, she's getting that litter in there, so we have to we have to go to the next step. So she's going up tomorrow morning, and uh, he's going to call me as soon as he can and tell me what he thinks. 
and uh, we may or may not do anything tomorrow, but something's got to be done. So we'll keep you posted, and I completely will agree with whatever he says because I trust him explicitly. He's just he's just the best, and uh, I trust whatever he decision he's going to have us do for her. So we will keep you posted. You guys are awesome. Please, please keep voting. Uh, help us out. And after Angie's done and um, we will turn the audio back on, we'll put the playground up. And one of these days real soon we're going to have another whole day, our audio day, and we'll let you know when that's going to be. Come on, Farrah. Come on over. Come on. So thank you, everybody, and we'll talk to you later.